Hey everybody, where are my dogs at? Roof, 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 roof. Where are my dogs at? Roof, 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 roof. roof. Where are my dogs? <laughs> now I'm not that guy, and you know that. You know that, folks. Welcome to Pep Talks. I'm not the guy who goes, where are my dogs at? First of all, I always know where my dog's at. I have two beautiful rescues, uh, Basil and Charlotte, and um, uh, I always know where they are because uh, they're a centerpiece of my life. And people who don't know where their dogs are, I, I think are irresponsible and um, just really... Um, don't have a moral center. So anyway, I know where my dog's at. I'm not that guy, right? Uh, Pep Talks, by the way, uh, we're going to have a call in today. Um, we're going to have a call in at five o'clock, uh, which is about a half hour from now. So I'll be holding down the fort for about 25 minutes or 25 minutes or whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. Time. Why, why are we so goddamn concerned about the time? Like, oh, 25 minutes, a half hour? Uh, oh God! What, oh, oh, 20, 20, 22 minutes? No, it's twenty. No, it's twenty-two minutes. Uh, but anyway, uh, I've had kind of a so. Yeah, I'm not the guy who says, "Where are your dogs at?" Because I'm the I am the guy who is, you know, I, I just have so many demons. You know what I mean? Um, I was just talking to a friend today, and um, well, my big thing is it, it's it's super hard. For me to love myself. Where are my dogs at? Roof, 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 roof. <laughs> that would be funny. The guy talking about he can't love himself. And, uh, and, but, but his other personality, like he's a schizophrenic. He's a, he's a, he's a schizophrenic. He's like, he's like self-loathing um, and really has trouble um, loving himself. Yet his other personality is just like a sports bar idiot. And don't get me wrong, uh, I love I love uh, the competitive competitiveness of sports. And uh, since um, I didn't get much love, um, I transferred like a lot of my validation into my sports teams. Uh, like in other words, uh, let's take the Yankees in baseball. It, they've been losing lately, and it's been really bugging me. You know, I'm just like, you fuck, like they disappoint me as if they were a family member. <laughs> they disappoint me as if they were a family member who betrayed me. You know what I mean? Like, that's really the level of, like, hurt. But I've gotten a lot better. As a kid, I'll never forget, I was listening to the Rangers um, hockey and uh, they lost. They got knocked out of the playoffs. And I uh, just battered. It was the, it was the days of radio. You 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 know, uh, there was just radio. The Ranger games I used to listen to, and uh, like old timey radio. And uh, you know, I uh, they lost, and I just bashed the shit out of a radio. Like just, I was so devastated. So now. Um, I'm definitely not like that, but I still, I still, like, I still, like, I still am aware that sports, you know, fills up, uh, this emptiness, but, um, so what, so yeah, so I have some, uh, I have some, uh, advertisements, you know, we have some great, we have some great ads. We, we've had some phone calls, uh, which is terrific. I'll, I'll play them, uh, for you as well. Um, and then uh, I, I'm going to chat it up a little. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. I mean, I, just it's just hard. It's hard when you are blocked in life. You know what I mean? Like when you just can't go for what you want to go for. Um, or you're actually your worst enemy. That is really the worst. Like I was telling my friend today that I have such a voice in my head um, that says you're a piece of shit. I'm not kidding. I have a voice in my head that says you're a piece of shit. Roof, 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 roof. Where are my dogs at? Roof, 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 roof. <laughs> 
I just you see what I'm trying to do there is that when I put it out on the table that I have like uh, like there's uh, I have to I'm a, I'm my own worst enemy a lot of the times you know and a lot of the time and you know it's just really it's like so deflating and I realized like I'm malnourished spiritually I'm malnourished that's why <clears throat> excuse me that's why I go toward you know, Buddhism, go toward uh, God. I'm so malnourished, go toward people, sports, food, because I want, because I'm just craving, I'm craving uh, like food, like, like, you know, like food, I'm craving nutrients, except it's like love, like I'm craving good feeling, I'm craving um, for this voice of self-hatred to get shut down. Now, of course, I've used the self-hatred to become a comedian. <laughs> and, you know, I, I was talking to a friend about how difficult it can be to uh, get on stage and try to make people laugh when you feel like you've got nothing. And what I do is that I use that self-hatred and try to get into absurdity and just kind of put myself out there and um, uh, somehow turn that self-hatred into humor. And it, it, it works a lot, but sometimes I'm just not up for, the, uh, up for the challenge. I've got two shows tonight. I'm going to be at the Comedy Store. This is Wednesday, September 5th, I believe it is. And uh, I'll be at the Comedy Store at 1045 tonight. And then also a show at the Ly Lyric Hyperion tonight um, at 8, eight o'clock. So anyway, I will be doing stand up tonight and it does stand up is such a good outlet too um for me because I just I just kind of like like that warmth that I get from you know the acceptance of the crowd is is also amazing. Um now when I don't get it, wow. Like when I bomb, you know, because I'm just not hitting the right tone, I'm not reading the crowd right, I'm just off whatever it is, then, wow, that that is a little dance I have to do with myself. Like, I, I almost have to rationalize. No, it's not you, Eddie, you know, like a real survival mode thing, you know, but woof, 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 where are the dogs at? Um, all right, we got some, let, let, let's go to our first ad, and then we'll go to a phone call. But, you know, I was talking about, um, you know, making the podcast a, a little therapeutic, uh, podcast like not that you know that sounds horrible but like 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 talk about issues that are really deeply affecting us and 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 not make it morbid uh, you know I mean I can be very morose you know um boy it's easy to go down that dark hole who was I watching a special about Mark Twain PBS uh, which sucks, by the way. PBS is, uh, they constantly beg for money. Meanwhile, the CEOs are making a fortune, yet they're begging for money uh, constantly from people. But they, they have a couple of good shows. I mean, I love documentaries. This was actually a Ken Burns documentary, and I do get hooked into, you know, that whole thing. Like, uh, And this was Mark Twain. This was Mark Twain was a very depressive um, guy, he went through a lot of tragedy. He lost a lot of different family members. Um, he, he was considered the first stand-up of his time as well. Um, and uh, there was a part, I, I, I watched part two last night. And that's not to brag that I have the ability to watch part two of a Ken Burns documentary about Mark Twain. By the way, Ken Burns, I heard really kind of uh, whitewashed U.S. involvement in Vietnam. Uh, a lot of people watch that that one I didn't watch it but uh you know like oh no talk about the invade no talk about why we invaded and th that's what I heard anyway um but um yeah Twain was like uh, a celebrity and a loner um later in his life like he had no family at this point and uh, basically his daughters kind of disowned him or were away and he would just walk up and down Fifth Avenue in a white linen suit and uh, I'm laughing because I'm think I, I I always tell my wife not to not to brag that I have that kind of commitment to others, um, even though that you know I I am malnourished spiritually. Uh, but 
Twain used to walk up and down Fifth Avenue in New York in a white linen suit just to be noticed. And I totally, I totally get that. He just needed to be loved. He, like, just needed to be loved. And this is, uh, you know, a preeminent genius in, in American literature. And um, I tell you, I, I, of course, like everybody, you know, uh, read Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer, but I haven't read a lot of Twain, and I, and I want to, and that's another thing that freaks me out, is um, not getting to books that I want to get to, and I'm, and, you know, I'm getting older, I mean, I know it's hard to tell how old I am because of um, the skin products I use, and you know, just the light that beams from me. I'm like, you know, I'm the space child who is like, Ken, where is love? <laughs> woof, 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 woof. Where, where are my dogs at? You know, I was in the gym again, not to brag that I actually have a will to live and, you know, was in the gym. I was in, a, I was in the gym today. Uh, and, uh, I just glanced up at the TV. I hate looking at TV in the fucking gym. People are watching CNN while they're on the treadmill, which to me is antithetical to health. You know, uh, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, all of it. Just the news. It, it's just a fucking shit show and hysteric, you know, just a hysteria and just a constant looping, uh, a constant looping of uh, nothingness that leads nowhere. The, de- the democracy's in a shambles. There's never any context given. Uh, there's there's. I don't know. Anyway, it's just, and it's addictive, too. Addiction is such a fucked up thing, and the news is uh, addictive. But I glanced up at the uh, the TV, and uh, Ellen, uh, one of the TVs was on Ellen, and Ellen, um, and it was muted, but she just introduced somebody, and it was a guy, a black dude who was an incredible dancer, and he just danced in the aisles for a while, and, and then the next segment, and this this, this kind of killed me. Uh, she introduced Mark Wahlberg, and he came out in a white T-shirt. He's very cut, very fit, and he came out in a white T-shirt. And it was just very funny to see all these women giving him a standing ovation. Now, the reason I'm laughing at that is why are they giving Mark Wahlberg a standing ovation? What the fuck did he do? Um... Uh, you know, his movies are, you know, kind of macho. Like, lately they've been very patriotic bullshit movies about the sniper and a couple other things. But I just I just saw it as, like, star fucker shit. You know, like, like they're just, you know, they're just clapping, you know, like seals. You know, like, oh, it's Mark Wahlberg. Oh, God, it's Mark Wahlberg. What I'm saying is celebrity is fucked up. Uh, it's a celebrity culture. Right. And celebrity is just a distraction. It's just it. And, and, and I get it, too, because I get celebrity as being a distraction. I want distraction. I distract myself. I, I, you know, I, I've been watching the Netflix show Ozark, um, which is just about the worst, the worst in people. But it hooks me in like I'm I, I think I'm just hooked in a, and a lot of people are hooked into the darkness of things. The news is dark. Uh, you know, the violent. We're hooked on violence, I think. Like like there is there are violent parts of Ozark, but but it's emotionally violent uh, all the time. You know, it's emotionally violent. Like like uh, there's threats to everybody all the time and people are just plotting to kill people but i think it's a good time for our first ad i've been meaning to read our first ad and it's uh, this one is for the this one is by i think our best sponsor it's chatworth the chatsworth actors guild okay and uh, they they just have helped so many people uh, start careers uh, here in Hollywood, and they're great. And I just want to thank them personally uh, for being a sponsor and for Matt Rossamoto. I say his name differently each time. Uh, and here we go. Chatsworth Actors Guild. Matt Rossamoto uh, writes these, and they're a great sponsor. It can be hard to step off the bus in Hollywood and start your acting career. Let me tell you, Let me give you 
two points of advice I was given so many years ago by a scruffy young go-getter named Bradley Cooper. Anybody remember Bradley Cooper? I actually did his show called Limitless um, on CBS, and I still get residuals. Limitless was canceled, and I believe the last episode was the one I did, and that's not the first show that I've had canceled after an appearance I've done. House also ended after an episode I did. So don't think I can't cancel your shows. That's the point behind that. But here we go. Let me give you two points of advice I was given so many years ago by a scruffy young go-getter named Bradley Cooper. Number one, enroll with Chatsworth Actors Guild. (laughs) Why can't I speak? Enroll with Chatsworth Actors Guild. Their talent pool is world famous. Two, auditioning is more than being able to peel a grapefruit with your butt. You have to emote. CAG, Chatsworth Actors Guild, is a great organization for actors just starting out. They can help you get your talentless feet on the ground and show you the ropes. To find your local CAG rep, go to the gas station bathroom where Nordorf meets Gresham. Okay, do you know where that is in Chatsworth? Go to the gas station bathroom where Nordorf meets Gresham. Lay out two fat Coke rails on the broken tile next to the rusty condom machine. You'll see it. When you see a cell phone light peep at you through a duct tape padded glory hole, you are in show business. Join Chatsworth Acting Guild today and let the acting begin. They're just good people. Uh, Just solid, solid people. Um, also, I want to play now a, uh, yeah, like I said, we, we, we had a couple of voicemails. Um, let's play this first one. Um, here we go, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. Uh, voicemail. Really enjoyed the podcast. Uh, been listening to it for a, a while. I don't know how long. Um, uh, I listened to Eddie on uh, Marin's Fly podcast a while back. He talked about the Double Boy and um, a bit about uh, the Harvard debate team. Um, I don't know. I liked all the ones. I, I, I liked the personal ones as well. When Eddie was in kind of in a bad place and doing stuff on his phone, the sound quality was kind of. Uh, that was so nice. I hope the I hope you guys heard that one. Um, that's funny. He didn't leave. I don't think he left his name, but uh, he was talking about how when I used to do the podcast in my car, it was very personally like that. And I'm trying to, yeah, you know, again do something like that. Um, but he said the sound quality was rank, and then <laughs> and then right now it was a little rank too. Uh, let's see. I have um, let's see. I have another one here. Uh, all right, this is this is one. Here we go. Hey, Eddie, it's uh, it's Scotty, Canada. It's twenty degrees hotter than it should be, and uh, just wanted to let you know I still have hope because I managed to semi semi train a chipmunk to eat out of my hands and off my wife's feet. Um, just a little upper for you in our, in our capital. Dystopian nightmare shitstorm. Okay, have a good podcast. <laughs> oh, Scott, thank you, Scott from Canada. That was very funny. Um, yes, it's twenty degrees warmer than normal, and uh, but Scott had hope because uh, he trained a chipmunk to eat out of his hand and off his wife's feet. Yeah, I think that we uh, we have to we have to go for anything that takes us out of ourselves, you know? And if it's training a chipmunk to do that, a chipmunk, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of a chimpanzee, like, 
Um, but no, no, the chipmunk. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, I scared. I, I get scared. I mean, I love animals. Of course, you know, you know, I'm vegan and I, and I love animals, but I do get scared of any wild animal like, like a chipmunk. I always think, oh God, their teeth, their teeth, and they're unpredictable and they're so instinctual and they're going to go for me. They're going to go for me. And I also think nature, I think nature represents like wild nature represents our subconscious um our subconscious like just anything can happen and it isn't structured and uh oh, oh god you know like just boy i've been dreaming a, a, a lot too lately um and uh, you know I, I i i had a dream where i had this huge huge pig and again, I'm a vegan, huge pig that was in my father's garage and the pig was dead, like in a coffin. And um, I was like, let's get it the fuck out of here. And the cops were like, no, you can't move it. I, get, I think pig, cops, I think that that was part of, you know, so, the symbolism of it. And then so, so I said, fuck it. And, and me and two other guys. Uh, secretly, we, we were like, all right, let's get it out of here later in the day, whatever. And then we got caught. And then we got caught. And then I was being told, you are going to go to jail. And I have such a fear. I have such a fear of jail. I think I've talked about this once or twice. Prison, you know. Um, God, my big fears are like uh, violence and prison and oh god and we have the biggest prison population in the world and it it has become a crime uh to be poor in america it really has i mean i mean there are two americas there are two americas um there's a great book by matt taibbi who's a great social commentator uh, he writes for the rolling stone and I've read a couple of his books. Um, he, w he wrote one on the campaign. I forget the fucking title of that one. Let me look that one up. I have these on Audible. I like, I, I, I like listening to Audible books um, when I'm traveling. Uh, they're so great to go to, go to sleep to. But he's, his is so good. Um, oh, Taibbi covered the 2016 um, GOP uh, GOP primary season, and he called it Insane Clown President. If you get a chance, you have to read Insane Clown President. And then the other book that was relating to the point I was bringing up about my fear of prison and incarceration and the fact that, you know, we have the biggest prison population in the fucking world. Uh, Taibbi wrote a book called The Divide, American Injustice in the Age of the Wealth Gap. You know, basically pointing out that if you have money, um, you could, um, you, you could, you, you, you just avoid prison, you know, uh, lawyering up, paying fines. Poor people, they can't even pay fines to get out of parking tickets or uh, just minor offenses and wind up in prison. And then there was a great article by Chris Hedges uh, this week in Truth Dig about, uh, you know, modern day slavery being prisoners who are put to work by corporations and paid absolutely nothing. Uh, just amazing that uh, they are paid absolutely nothing. Um, Oh, okay. I, I think we have a phone call. And yes, uh, who is this, please? Hey, it's Matt Rossimato. Matt no, Rossimato. God damn it, it's Matt Rossimato. <laughs> All right. It's, it's Rossimoto. All it's, the time. It's, yes. it's, it's Matt Rossimato. Uh, Matt, thank you, <laughs> thank you for calling in. Uh, you're, the, you're the producer here. And um, uh, I just wanted to talk to you. What is your biggest fear in life i just talked about i don't know if you heard it i don't know if you heard it on the phone um but mine one of mine is going to prison and and i just feel like i'm serious like going to jail mm -hmm. and I, i'm afraid of violence like i i feel like and and you know prisons are just 
you know, super violent, abusive, um, you know, it's, it, it's, I don't know. I, I, I was talking about a dream I had where I was going to have to go to jail and I was freaking out, but that's one of my biggest fucking fears going to jail, being locked away. What about you? Oh, white linen suits. <laughs> Having to wear a white linen suit. That just sounded that sounded terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Why? Because I understand that linen I haven't had many linen things because I'm a kid from the working class with crooked teeth. Yet I do rebel against the powers that be. I have the courage to rebel against the powers that be instead of falling in line like the sheep. Woof 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 wherever that my dog's at. But um I hear that linen is a beautiful material, and a white linen suit made a lot of sense to me. My wife said, you would dirty that in a second because a lot of food that I eat falls on oh, my yeah. clothing. Or, does that happen to you? Yeah. yeah, if you eat like I eat, it just there's just no saving anything you wear. So <laughs> Are I, you like I, that too? Yeah, I, I don't even chew. I just take a broom handle and just shove the food down my throat. Who's got the time to chew anymore? 2018 who's got that? yes true. by the way that uh, i believe we should be fed with just like uh, a blow dart with nutrients in it like just whoosh, like just or a gun that cut like a gun comes from your kitchen like it's attached to the wall right and you pull it out and it just shoots a meal into you and it just it's like a small needle and it just bang oh like, yeah like ooh, that was thanksgiving and thanksgiving can be over in about i don't know Two to five seconds, like boom. But you, you still will get the tryptocan, trypt, tryptophan uh, effect. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm tired of using w only one orifice to eat with, like a lazy person. I've got several orifices. Just mm -hmm. use them all at once. Get the food in me. Let's be done. I got stuff to do. Yes. Oh, well, me. you're a go-getter. You're a go-getter, right? Right. Uh, I've got naps to take. Yes, by the way. Uh, that is a, a, a great point. Um, you know, uh, taking naps is really something that we have to do and that has to get done. And that is on my to-do list every fucking day is to take as many naps as I can squeeze into a day. And the naps are dependent on my um, ability to avoid reality. <laughs> Naps are a great yeah, way to avoid reality, except you wake up a little uh, frightened. I like a good long nap, but my, my pets will lay on me while I sleep, and they just dump all of their hair. So when I wake up, I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just layered, just slathered in animal hair well, after a nap. So now I, you're speaking my language. Um, I'm slathered in food products that, I, that have escaped my mouth onto my shirt, and animal hair, food and animal hair. <laughs> yeah, no white linen clothes for either of us. It's, it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. So, but tell me what, I mean, seriously, um, what, what, is, like, I'm afraid of going to jail. What, what's a, a real fear that you have? Well, I've talked about it before. I've got a completely nonsensical fear of flying. And that's why I take oh, my Oh, a lot of my, people have that. My pills. <laughs> yeah, and it makes me angry because I know it makes no sense. Like mm -hmm. I, I used to fly all the time, and then one day it just it just ended for me, where the Ooh. next flight was just a horrific May experience. I, I, mm -hmm. I, th mm -hmm. I think that's a little bit, or a lot of bit, claustrophobia. What do you think of that? No, I love I love the coziness of a good tight space. It's just the... Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, look, this is not that type of podcast, all right? There's plenty of podcasts <laughs> that will deal with that issue, and they are, they are niche podcasts, and um, that niche is a tight, hard space, but I don't know if you use the word tight. You probably didn't, um, but, but are you being serious? You don't mind the comfort? You like? You no, no, no. I, I don't... I don't so I'm not worried about being claustrophobia. I, that doesn't really bother me. I used to, I used to do a lot of spelunking as a kid, so I'm used to like the ooh, dark and you, you don't know what's next. I don't, I don't really care about that. But it's, I think for me, it's the process. Mm -hmm. If you've ever used Southwest, I have, have to like deal with oh. the lines. It's oh, Southwest, my brain like, just go, yeah, yeah. 
You mean like lining up, at, you know, you have to be at A37 or B25? That kind or of shit? Or just like, it, they always mess up the ticket, so I've always got to go and use the counter. Oh, really? explain to them my situation. I'm like, how much money did I just pay that I've got to now come up and explain that what, this, what my ticket says is I'm going from A to B. I'm giving you like literally like $1,000, and I still have to go up and, and validate myself for this trip. Because somebody mixed up something or misspelled my name or uh, whatever on the ticket, and yeah. it's, it's that kind of it's that kind of thing that I just for me it, it just ramps up in my head before I go on a trip. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to have to justify my existence to this, to, yeah. to this poor person behind the counter who doesn't want to hear it because their life is so fucking horrible, and that's why they have this job. And so it, for me, it just all ramps up over over months. It becomes this like. Over just trudging. Months. Oh yeah. If I know I'm going on a trip like six months from now, then my brain will just start like a snowball on top of a hill. Just mm. ratchet it and ratchet it. Well, I was going to say, but that, but I don't know if it makes sense because you do it six months ahead, but I can't because I go on a bunch of trips. So, um, yeah. but you're not so much talking about the act of flying, but you're talking about the whole fucking process. Like, um, you know, leaving, uh, uh, having to go through security. I, I, I do get panicked about that. Like, like, but I think it's related to being uprooted. I think there's something about traveling mm-hmm. that taps into this fear of leaving home, of like going. You know, just it, like you lose control. I think. I think a lot of what we do is you know in our in our domiciles in our you know in our neighborhoods where we work where we live is we try to um get everything under control like okay i get up at this hour and i have my coffee and then and then and then and once you fucking get on a plane once you head to the airport you're leaving all of that control behind do you think it's related to your lack of control Oh, that's a good question. Um, yes, of you know, course, I, it's I, a good question. <laughs> Not here to yeah, ask bad about, questions. <laughs> I think about uh, yeah, the lack of control. I mean, you mm-hmm. literally are in someone else's hands the entire way, and that pilot, when yeah. he comes on, he does not sound like a sane person. Nothing he says makes <laughs> any kind of sense. Like he starts spouting numbers off. And mm-hmm. starts talking about you know uh, turbulence, which I think we all know is just made made up words for gremlins. And you know, mm-hmm. magically in however many hours you're going to land somewhere, it's, it's all it all feels. Yeah, so it is lack of control. It is lack of control. Uh, we spend so much of our lives trying to like control things, don't don't you? Or, you know, because I think we're so, and especially these days in America when it's a shit show of Cirque du Soleil um, proportions. And I like Cirque du Soleil. I've seen Cirque du Soleil a few times, and I think I could use to see them again. Uh, but the 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 shit show of the you know our decayed slash decaying democracy um, potentially into uh, fascism at this point or or just like, like, like again, most of America, a lot of America are going into to poverty and we're just feeling so kind of on edge that the, that the urge for control is, is even greater, don't you think? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll 100% back you that uh, flying on an airplane is a form of fascism. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. That, well, that was my point, and good for you for uh, <laughs> picking up on that. It's what I do. It's what I do. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I feel, so my fear, like violence is such a primal fear. You know, and I think my violence is also related to like my fear of violence is related to my self-loathing, you know, Mm. because it's kind of a violence that I do to myself. Right. Woof, 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 woof. Where are my dogs at? I just want to always put that in there. 
Um, look, what I'm trying to do with the where are my dogs at is that just because this is a psychiatric self-evaluation and a psychiatric evaluation of Matt Rasamoto or Mato or M <laughs> it doesn't mean we still can't have, you know, some good old fashioned stupidity. <laughs> where are my dogs at? By the way, did you see Ellen today, Matt? No, I don't. I don't. I don't watch Ellen. There's, there's a little bit of history there. <laughs> Do we need to not get into that or get into that? Well, I mean, if you if you remember, like the early '90s, she did a lot of uh, um, mm -hmm. interstitials for Nickelodeon, and I was like, oh my god, I was like, finally a sexy comedian who's got some jokes about Lassie. And then after that, when she went mainstream, I was like, no, no, this isn't working for me. I like my, I like my, uh, oh, you I like thought... her back when she was dark and rugged. Right, 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 right. She's the opposite of that now. You think that would happen to me? Like if I got like, let's just say NBC swooped in and made, and I replaced Fallon, right? Would I become, yeah. you know, just like a complete and utter sellout? Or would I say, good evening, like to the whole nation, good evening, everybody. I'm afraid of violence. <laughs> no. Don't you think that would be great if, like, like Jimmy Fallon pivoted and he was like talking to the, you know, instead of going, oh, you know, we got Katy Perry tonight, and we have, you know, ah, you know, instead of that kind of shit, uh, which they all do, and they're, they're, you know, they're all so boring, even e they're all so boring, even though Jimmy Kimmel has seemed to become like the spokesperson for like sanity, you know. Uh, like Jimmy Kimmel is like our leader through the dark times. I don't know if you've caught any of Kimmel, but he's been very eloquent with speaking out against school shootings. That's his specialty. Uh, and um, I, he's, he speaks out against school shootings and um, uh, deaths, uh, unwanted deaths in hospital, unwanted surgery by doctors in hospital. No, I'm kidding about the last one, but it would be funny how if fucked up do we have to be to have jimmy kimmel as the voice of reason yeah well that's my point that's my point i and, yeah. and i like kimmel i used to work on his show until i didn't anymore and that's my struggle is um <laughs> i have worked <laughs> and i and i'm not working that much uh these days and you know maybe that's the key to my self-loathing yeah, well, so what do you what are what are some of your other big fears Matt. Oh, other big fears. Well, all right, you flying. Pull out, pull out the list. Well, no, flying. Like, like, uh, I have a friend who's deathly afraid of spiders. Deathly afraid of spiders, and I think that's like you know they're they're, you know I I get that fear of spiders. I'm super afraid of snakes, and someone pointed out it may it's a penis thing, like I may be afraid of you know, penises that live in the wild. <laughs> I, I, can, I can understand that, yeah. Uh, no, but I what's... Mean, you don't no, want I'm afraid... Going on a hike. What's that? And then just, you don't want to be going on a hike and then just being attacked willy-nilly by willies. It's not, not, not cool, you know? You don't want to be going on a hike and get attacked by willy and nilly. No. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Um, yeah, like, but snakes, I think... Um, are just like, I mean, it's just like a primal fear, snakes and spiders, you know? But what, what, do you have any kind of fear of nature like that? Like, did you, did you hear the, the point I made about nature being like such an unknown, you know? I think the unknown, is, we're just wired to feel afraid of the unknown. No, I, I grew up in the Ozarks. So did you? Always, yeah, it was no. always crazy. Can I ask um, you a question? We, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Well, we'll finish your thought first because I interrupt a lot. Yeah. Finish your thought. So uh, yeah, uh, my mom's listening on Facebook right now, so she'll appreciate this one. But we used to live next to or near a, uh, a drive-through zoo, which is the kind of zoo where you get in your car and they open up the gates and you just drive through the zoo, right. which was cool. Except for people would have trucks, and when they get to like the monkey section, the monkeys just jump in the back of the truck and just drive out with you through the zoo. And so we would have these. Stories Sounds people, like, like something out of Ocean's birth. Eleven. Yeah, so people just get attacked by monkeys in the woods because these crazy Whoa. monkeys would just be out there starving to death, and Aww. they would just attack people. Oh, that's fucked. So up. yeah, no. 
we're used to, I'm used to crazy, crazy shit happening in, in like, you know, the Ozarks. It's just, you just deal with it. Can I? So I'm not, I'm not, and I've, and I've grown up in like, in, in Arkansas, I have to say that, mm-hmm. and, and when I was in Kansas too, I've had enough guns pulled on me that the last time somebody actually pulled a gun on me, I was just like, oh yeah, this again. It's, Wow. So the unknown doesn't really phase me. You get used to it after a while. After a while, it's just like, oh, yeah, something crazy is going to happen. And, and it's probably why I grind my teeth at night. But you, you just kind of – you live in a – you get used to a, 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 a world of stress, and that becomes the new normal. And you're like, okay, this is, this is where that goes. I do get afraid of inactivity mm. when, when there isn't anything going on. Then I get worried because I'm like, no, there should be a level of madness consuming my day and when i don't have it then it feels it feels weird hey like, could you ha- hang on for one second while i do a commercial for writer duet <laughs> i just want to get to this yeah. commercial um uh so writer duet is a real sponsor and um I-, I don't know if you're confused about how i say that these are real ads and then i say hey Writer Duet is a real sponsor. I don't even know what's going on, but I know that Writer Duet is a sponsor, and these, uh, again, written by Matt. Uh, Listen, before I go into our ad for Writer Duet, let me get something off my chest. As a celebrity, okay, and I think I am definitely a celebrity, as a low level, but, you know, As a celebrity who posts his personal information online, not from hubris, but because I want to connect with you, the audience, you can email me at epepitone, E-P-E-P-I-T-O-N-E, at sbcglobal.net, or call and leave a message for the podcast and me at 424-262-0904. That's 424-262-0904. 0904. Please leave us a message. You heard a couple of calls before. And I'll go out of my way to respond because I am 100% love. Some people want to use those outlets to try and be harmful. And I get a few of these each week. Let me make a suggestion. Type up your Lageria in Write a Duet. Find some friends who also think of me as a shallow pool of toilet water and use Writer Duet's cooperative writing feature to really let me have it. I put a lot of work into this show each week. I have guests, a producer, a very talented group of engineers. The least you can do is put a little effort behind your rambling jumble of grammatical missteps and egregious spelling errors. Dad. Writer Duet. The link is in the description. So, yeah, Writer Duet is a real sponsor. And, yeah, pool your talent with their cooperative writing uh, feature and and come after me uh, if you want. I, I, you know, I can take it. By the way, uh, Lolly is, uh, is still in Florida, is he not? Or has he moved on from Florida? Uh, no, Matt? Lolly's in Florida. He's got a uh, – he's, he's going to be on a local podcast, which I don't remember off the top of my head. And he's mm-hmm. also – um, performing at the end of the month, he's going to be featuring, I believe, in Jacksonville. Um, I'll add all that into the uh, into the description. Uh, I below. also, uh, but I was reading about some nasty weather in Florida. Like the Gulf Coast was bracing for Gordon, is the name of this hurricane, I believe. Have you heard anything about Gordon the hurricane? No, but I know Stephen lives on uh, the edge of danger at all times. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Well, I, uh, I'm sure he's excited for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gordon the Hurricane, by the way, uh, just made me think of a children's book that might be good, Gordon the Hurricane. And it's about Gordon yeah. just blowing everybody. <laughs> oh, sometimes I like just the worst jokes, you know, <laughs> uh, just the worst jokes, Gordon. Um, but also did uh, your wife is Japanese. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, did you see hurricane? Je- no, they call it typhoon typhoon. By the way, what's the difference between a typhoon and a hurricane? Do you know? Uh, I believe it's, I believe it's the, uh, it's the direction it goes. Uh, or the, 
the direction yeah, or or the location it's either direction or location i think it's the location but the, did you did you see uh jebby typhoon jebby hit japan yesterday western japan oh no great thanks and i get to look forward to that tonight wait wait tonight. a minute it happened yesterday you didn't ha you didn't your wife is japanese and not, it wasn't discussed in your household no we're busy people well, you know, me and my um, wife, well, me and my wife, there's no Japanese heritage in our household. And we're discussing Jebby 24-7 yesterday. Like, I'm like, honey, put on Jebby. <laughs> no, we're, we're just surprised that there's two Hurricane Bianca movies. That's That's been our discussion. What's that? We just can't believe it. The two Hurricane Bianca movies on Netflix. We just can't believe that, that that's a thing. I don't even remember. I don't even remember Hurricane Bianca. Was that was that a devastating one? Yeah, it was. It was. So it was the sequel. Both of those <laughs> were so was the sequel. All right. Uh, again, let's get back to to a little bit of therapy. We don't want to have too good a time here. Um, what? other fear do you have I, I i mentioned spiders snakes for me is one i just feel like a snake is gonna come and bite me like just whew, they're so quick and there's something about, there's something about a rattler like seeing uh a, or a copperhead snake like just watching them rear up you know um watching them rear up which is a function on your iphone um just watching them rear up and like 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 getting ready to strike it just seems like you can't do anything about that danger if it occurs you know what i mean like it seems like an indefensible thing no matter how much uh krav maga you've taken yeah i don't think i don't think hand-to-hand -hand combat works really well with snakes so much um but it, it, i don't know i don't i don't really have the fear of uh yeah I don't really have the fear of uh, of snakes so much um, or animals. Um, I, you know, my brother and I we used to capture all sorts of horrible animals and then show them to our parents, who were very unhappy with us. But uh, yeah, maybe you know, I used to have a, a fear of boats, which I thought was pretty pretty crazy boats? as well. I guess maybe it's just a general fear of transportation. Um, yeah, boats for sure. And it, I think it was just you're on a boat, which is great, but then the ocean is so deep. Uh, yeah. You don't know what's really under there. None of us really know. And you can, and if you, something happens, then you've got to swim. But you, no one's going to swim like five miles to shore. It's just not going to happen. Well, the ocean, you're done, you're done. the ocean, like typically represents the id, or your unconscious. Like, just it is so vast. It is. I, I, I definitely have a fear of the ocean. It, it also is a little bit of an agoraphobic thing. Um, mm -hmm. because it's so vast. And I, I remember um, I was, um, and this is not to brag or hurt anybody or make them feel less than, but I was in an improv troupe, and we took a boat, and uh, we it was like in Lake George, just a huge lake in, in uh, upstate New York, I think. And we jumped off the boat, and I remember being in the water, and I had smoked pot, and I remember being in the water and I just looked around, and all I saw was water. This isn't even in the fucking ocean, just a giant lake. And I just looked around and saw water, and a, and a deep fear gripped me, and I actually kind of got paralyzed and had to be helped into the boat. And I, I was never the same comedically, uh, improv-wise, after that. Like, every time I got a suggestion, I just would... I would just, you know, uh, do the same thing, which was, uh, uh, you know, go into a southern accent and, <laughs> and and not be able to connect with my partners. But yeah, no, I now have a fear of improv groups on boats. That sounds horrific. Well, you know, but that is a fear, though. The the ocean is again, and I I, I I mean, travel. I think I think you have control. Like I would have to say, you might have. Um, excuse me, a uh, like a control issue thing. Do you want to read the Amerisuites ad? Do you have it in front of you? Uh, I can pull it up. I'm just, I'm surprised how. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wonder how how clear I sound. Um, you see. sound clear. You sound clear. No, do I? First time I've ever heard that in my life. Uh, um, let me pull up. This is a funny let one. It uh, it's a funny one, but it's what Amerisuites is about, and they are a great sponsor. 
And um, Matt Rasamato has written uh, this, and uh, we're we're happy. Emeritus Sweets is on board. Do you have it? Do you have it in front of you? I got it. I got okay, it. Okay, why don't you read? All right. Leave the fi- leave the thin veil. Not so easy, to- huh, Rasamoto? Because I know that you, you know, judge us when we're reading these fucking commercials. And I stumble on a word. I just see your head shake. But go ahead. Third word, you fucked it. Go, go, go back. Go, go. Read it. And let your fantasies come to life. No, no, no. Start again. Yeah. Across the U.S. What? Start again. Start from the beginning again? Yeah. This is, this is what this is all about, isn't it? This is all about this. All right. Leave the thin veil of reality behind. And let your fantasies come to life at any one of the Amerisuites across the U.S. With a majority of other... Ah, oh, goddammit. Nice. With a majority of their locations being next to parks, campgrounds, and truck stops. Let the alpha predator and you go wild in the freedom you feel after a good night's stay at Amerisuites Hotel. Amerisuites Hotels are known for their opulent and spacious rooms. Their family-sized suites have separate sleeping quarters large enough for you and any number of teenage runaways. All American suite, uh, all Amerisuite's beds have stylish, high thread count sheets. Only the softest and most plush blankets and cozy pillows, perfect for smothering the voices in your head. Right after you do their dark bidding, as always, before you commit to your plan of ritualistic murder suicide, check out the bountiful breakfast buffet. Sure to put a smile on even the grumpiest faces lurking behind the flesh mask. So next time the voices in your head scream so loud you feel like you might burst, remember, don't downsize. Americize. Okay, that wasn't very good. Um, <laughs> well, don't and that's your that. words too. Let me let me do it the way let me do it the way this should have been read. Okay. Do it. Do it. Uh, this is Amerisuites, folks, and they're just a great uh, chain of hotels um, that allow people to do things, um, and um, they've been on board with us now. Uh, since we started. So here we go. Leave the thin veil of reality behind and let your fantasies come to life at any one of the Amera suites across the U.S. with the majority of their locations being next to parks, campgrounds, and truck stops. Let the alpha predator in you go wild with the freedom you feel after a good night's stay at Amero Suites Hotel. Amero Suites Hotels are known for their opulent and spacious rooms. Their family-sized suites have separate sleeping quarters large enough for you and any number of teenage runaways. All Amero Suites beds have stylish, High thread count sheets, only the softest plush blankets and cozy pillows, perfect for smothering the voices in your head right after you do their dark bidding. As always, before you commit to your plan of ritualistic murder-suicide, check out the Bountiful Breakfast Buffet, sure to put a smile on even the grumpiest faces lurking behind a flesh mask. So next time the voices in your head scream so loud you feel like you might burst, remember, don't downsize. Amerisize. What'd you think? You know, jar is pretty o- easy to open once I've loosened it. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> uh, we are at the 530 mark. I just want to say that there was a tweet by Mark Roman that said, no offense at Jimmy Fallon, but your replacement has been suggested at Eddie Pepitone. <laughs> hey, you had a good run, Jimmy. Hashtag late night. Hashtag comedy. Hashtag Eddie Pepitone. Hashtag NBC. Hashtag now more than ever. Uh, Facebook.com. Pepitone fans. I guess that's the Facebook uh, ad. Oh. <laughs> Mark just uh, um, uh, DM me, uh, which is lingo uh, for people uh, who don't uh, Twitterize uh, for direct message. He says, uh, you are a national treasure. I'd love to have you on my podcast uh, someday. Yes, definitely, Mark. I will definitely be on your podcast, and I'd love to have you on this one as well. Um, all right, Maddie, thank you for calling in. Um, uh, again, uh, do you want to tell the audience anything about uh, the possible the possible pivot to of the podcast? 
Uh, sure. A few things. Um, we're looking at bringing in more guests. Um, you know, kind of reworking how we do guests possibly. We're looking at doing live phone calls, which would be great, interacting more with the fake people on Facebook Live. Uh, there's a lot of new fun stuff coming down the pipe. And before I go, Eddie, have you seen anything funny on the street? Ha <laughs> ha! Thank you for reminding me. Have you seen anything funny where people walk around? Have you seen anything funny when you're outside your house and not in your car or a store? I'm talking about the street. Have you seen anything funny on the street? I know that there's a lot of hustle and bustle. Well, you get the idea. Have you seen anything funny on the street? Um, let me think. I did. I know. I don't know if this is too funny. It's not that funny, but there, there was something a little funny about it. Me and my wife were walking our little doggies by my by the vet that we take them to because Basil had a little scratch in his eye, an ulcer in his eye, and um, uh, we saw a guy. I saw a guy sitting on a curb, <laughs> and a grown man, grown man, uh, dressed all in black, bald, um, and he was looking through a monitor, and above him was a drone. And he just was watching the drone. And I, 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 first of all, I find drones creepy. I find them extremely creepy, uh, drones. And, uh, and just to see this guy, like, so focused in on, I guess, what the drone is filming. Um, and I kept wanting to look into his um, screen there to see what the fuck, you know. But I just, I just think it's, I, I, I just think it's, so ridiculous. Unless he was a filmmaker, then I give him a pass. But uh, um, that was about that. You know, I saw that. Did you see anything funny on the street? Fucking, I'm looking. At, yeah, I saw a woman walking a pig. But you just did an entire like drone thing. <laughs> what did you see, Eddie? Oh, I saw Harbinger of Death. What did you see, Matt? Oh, a woman walking a pig. Yeah, great, <laughs> great. Thanks, Eddie. You saw a woman walking a pig. That's funnier than seeing a guy, uh, a grown man. Uh, monitoring his drone in a, in a, by the way, it was in a bucolic area, Valley Village here in uh, L.A., uh, in the San Fernando Valley, really nice part of uh, L.A., very suburban, very uh, kind of sweet, sweet-ass neighborhood. And he's there with a the drone just hovering. And you could hear the drone. By the way, one of the things I really love about drones is uh, the, the vicious noise they make. <laughs> like my dog is looking up and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, you idiot? Yeah. All right, Matt, thank you for uh, being our call-in. Did you, did you actually, you, you, you were going to say something about the podcast you said before that I wanted to ask you about, have you seen anything funny on the street? Do you, did you, did you want to talk about it? The pivot? No, I think, I, I think, Mm -hmm. I think I said it all. Okay. You know, guests, phone calls. Okay. Uh, Thanks, buddy. Thanks for calling in. Uh, next week we have Eleanor Kerrigan, right, Matt? Booked? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'll be in Austin on uh, September 27th as part of the Altercation Comedy Festival. Uh, please check that out. Altercation Comedy Festival. Google that. And then I'll be in uh, Fargo, North Dakota, the 19th and 20th at the... Uh, at the, uh, I always forget this, the Tap Room uh, out in Fargo, Dakota. And um, please keep listening to Pep Talks. Thank you to Emma, our engineer. And wh Emma, what's your last name again? Erdbrink. Erdbrink. Emma Erdbrink. And uh, w w we will be back next week with Eleanor Kerrigan, a very funny comic. Uh, all right, everybody. Thank you. See you later. Bye.